Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, you made it through another week. Today we are going to tackle two, uh, I think they're Stanley Boxwood rulers that we picked up at the uh, Long Island Tool Meet last week. And you as a, an audience overwhelmingly wanted to see these done. So I'm going to devote the entire episode. You're going to see my thought process, everything that it takes to try and get these into decent shape. So let's get started right away okay uh, well needless to say i was a little bit shocked when everybody came up with the wooden rule as their number one tool they'd like to be restored so here we go i just picked up a couple rulers from my collection that i have upstairs that you might find interesting before we get to the ones we're going to work on today um a lot of people collect uh these type of rulers folding rulers uh old rulers made of boxwood things like that because they're just beautiful in their design the way they were made and uh, you could see here this one's a, called a hook ruler because you can hook it against something to measure if you want to measure the width of this ruler you could hook it over here and you see it's one inch you see that the graduation says it's one inch and that's a great hook rulers are fantastic they come all different types to, so there's no wondering if you're at the edge or not you know am i close to the edge am i over you know you hook it right on always preferred these and this slides out too so um this one's a nice one over the this one here was my great grandfather's uh one of the few folding i used to play with this as a kid and you could see here i i love the font the fancy font of of these rulers and and you can see i used to, and again this one's a little bit loose because <laughs> Because I used to play with it, like I said, as a kid. I just thought it was fascinating. Now, obviously, we're all used to uh, the type of rulers that open up wing-wang and stuff like that. And I've always had them. But this one here, I think you'll find interesting. It's called the Interlex and Interlox Ruler. And uh, Master Rule Manufacturing Company of New York City. Uh, my good buddy James from Time Flies in the Shop has one of these. But... Uh, this one I've had for quite a while, and what's nice about this one, what's unusual about this one, is unlike regular rules that flip open and then back and forth, and I, I, I never liked using them. I know there are some trades the guys use them. I just never got used to using them. You know, I, I was, I guess, a tape measure guy. But with this one here, you push down on this little lock mechanism here, and it slides out like this, and then it locks. And you can see here, and now... Uh, when you want to do the second, now what's nice about this is this one pulls out, locks, okay, and then it'll pull out again, locks, and that's how this ruler is. Now you can see there's quite a bit of overlap on here, so it's a much stiffer ruler. It's a much, instead of that kind of wonky, flappy, folding type rulers that I was never crazy about, to close it, you have to depress the lock, and it locks in like this. What a nice ruler, right? Um, these are just a, a lovely ruler. You don't see these too often. And I'm surprised because, like I said, they were, you know, and look at the nice graphics. Look at the hand tells you, you know, the push on there. And obviously the pat pending when it was made, you know, back in the days when they made beautiful stuff. So that's nice. Uh, and lastly, we have another nice folding rule here. And this is a Lufkin. Lufkin made great quality stuff. Again, has the hook feature. You could pull this out. Um, and these were very accurate. You could see the, the writing on there and, and how they're made. But now, again, we're cleaning these up. You know, when you have them in there pretty decent like this, a lot of people don't touch them, especially if you're going to collect them. This one here, obviously, was cleaned up nicely, but just the ends and stuff like that. Let me show you. Uh, the two we're going to work on today. Now, I bought these at the uh, at Chris's $5 table. They were $5 each. And, and the reason I got them is because I thought they would make a nice project for the show. I'm not a ruler collector, but I just, you know, I, I look for projects, I think. And um, I'm so glad I did with your response of wanting to see them done. These particular rulers are very nice because they have a brass inlay around the whole side. You see here? So you get no wear and tear on the ends because they're they're covered where normal folding rules like this were just wood on the side. So very interesting to see that. Um, you can see they are very, very dirty. Um, what we're going to have to do is, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different schools of thought on how to clean these up. When it comes to wood, 
you really don't want to use water on wood because it gets in the grain and expands. It could, it, it could create all kinds of havoc. However, with a lot of cleaners, there's water in the cleaners and some of the cleaners, some guys like to use mineral spirits. Some guys like to use, um, you know, different acids that, uh, that they have and, and whatnot to bleach the wood. But then you got to be careful because you want to have that nice golden yellow kind of tone to it. You know, you don't want to lose that. But, uh, you know, so it's difficult. So what we're going to do is we're going to try a couple things because, you know, this one's, like I said, really dirty. And remember I was telling you, a lot of people had good luck with goop. Now, I talk about that a lot, goop or any kind of hand cleaner. And uh, because it really doesn't have a that much of a liquid that'll penetrate. So we'll try a couple things. Murphy's oil soap I used years ago. I never, Murphy's oil soap wasn't a real strong soap to clean. It, it's good, but, uh, you know, so we'll try. We'll see what we can come up with. Now, you can see I took a little bit of goop over here. I buy it in the kind of the big containers because I use this quite a bit. It's, it is great stuff, all different kind of cleanings. I have a very soft, fine, used <laughs> toothbrush. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit on here like this. And we're just going to rub it up. Because this dirt that's on this particular ruler is extremely, extremely thick. So I don't think I have to worry about with this side, you know, this is the worst side. So we're going to try it on here first. And what you want to do is we're going to apply the goop. Give it a couple seconds to uh, to let the soap do the, the magic. And then we'll lightly with the brush, you know, in small circular motions and whatnot. We don't want to remove any of the lettering. But the lettering was Indian ink or India ink rather. And it was usually uh, pretty durable. But uh, that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to get rid of the ink. I've seen some guys sand these down. That's kind of like a last resort, you know, uh, especially for collectors. They'll be bugging out if you do something like that. But a little bit of goop, a little bit of action here. You can see we got a little bit of dirt coming up. Nothing crazy, but we'll work it back and forth and see what this does. Okay, good news, bad news. The good news is it seems to be lifting up the dirt uh, where, above here, but over here, you see that? That seems like somebody was handling this with something almost like a resin or something sticky like that, you know, maybe a varnish or something. There's something on there that that it's not getting under. So that's going to be an issue. You see that? But for the regular wood part, like this side don't have, this side has a little bit over here. You can see now, now that is... That's not coming off. That's like, like I said, somebody touched this when their hands had resin or something on it. So that's going to be a problem, but that's okay because this is the worst of the two. So we'll experiment on this and see what we can do with that. That's going to be tough to get that off. We might have to actually go to a physical to scrape or something. And, uh, you know, it's like kind of a last resort, but we'll see what we can do. Next, we're trying a little bit of uh, mineral spirits again. This, this sticky surface here, this is what we want to dissolve to get up. And sometimes you could tell when you put the right uh, chemical on here that dissolves it, you'll see it come up on, on your cotton swab. Unfortunately, the mineral spirits isn't doing anything to that, whatever that is. Like I said, it feels like a fiberglass resin almost on there, you know, and it's, uh, it's just not dissolving it. So sometimes you got to go to a stronger and stronger chemical, you know, to see what will dissolve it. But, you know, you, you don't want to, that, uh, those lines in there, the same thing that's going to dissolve this is probably going to dissolve the, the ink in those lines, you know. So, uh, you know, again, we're, we're at a dilemma trying to find out what can get rid of that without uh, destroying the lines. Okay, now looking at this chemical here, I kept feeling it and say, and like I keep telling you, it felt like some kind of fiberglass or resin or something. So I went with the heavy guns. Ralph, thanks for these, man. This really helps on these, these bamboo. Uh, but I, I'm putting some here. Check out what I'm using. Acetone. Acetone, as you know, it's like a nail polish remover. And the first thing I noticed when you put a little on here like this, what did I tell you? If it comes up on the, on the Q-tip, it means it's dissolving the chemical. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to dissolve whatever this is. It feels like, a, look at that. It feels like a glue, you know, but we don't want to take off the number. So we're just going to soften it up with the acetone, keep you know revolving this around. And it's almost like we're doing a art restoration, but... Look at that, how it's coming up, and we're trying not to take off the uh, 
the the numbers but that's t that's dissolving whatever this was glue some kind of glue on here it definitely is dissolving it so now it's just a tedious time of taking this off bit by bit okay so I, I got about a half an hour into this again I'm trying to get this now this black I got most of that remember that 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 covering that was on there I think it was like rubber cement or some kind of contact cement or something that's why the acetone is dissolving it again it's not affecting the numbers but now that black stain it's I don't know how to get that off but we're working away but you know what's funny I was looking doing some research on how other people clean box rulers and watching some things and I was watching this one uh read this one vlog that said, you know, don't worry, you know, it's it's you what you have is an inexpensive box rule. It's not like you have a Stanley number 62 or something that you don't want to mess with. <laughs> and of course, what do I have here? Stanley, can you see that? Number 62. Yeah. Always me. Always me. The stuff I don't want to mess with. Now I'm going to have all the, the ruler guys. They're going to be like the patina boys. They're going to be sending me, you know, letters in the mail. And you can tell it's the, the ruler guys because everything is, you know, they have the straight lines on everything. Okay, next up, being I'm all in on this one, I'm trying some uh, Barkeeper's Friend. Now, this is a cleanser, but it also has oxalic acid in here. And this is the stuff that kind of bleaches wood. But again, we have a very dark area. So I tried, I made a paste of it, tried it on here. It's not messing with the numbers. I'll be able to bring back that sheen. But uh, it's looking better. So I'm going to try it on this half and see what happens. Okay, I believe I've come up with the, uh, the best way to do these wooden rulers. Especially if you get one that is bad like, like mine. You know, mine was really bad. This one here is the better of the two. Okay. I'm going to show you, start, <clears throat> what I do, I mix a slurry. When I say slurry, it looks like this, you see? Not too liquidy, kind of like a slurry of Barkeeper's Friend, a little bit of water, okay? Now what you're going to do, is you're going to take your, pay attention here. This is where, <laughs> guys freak out, number, another 62. You're going to take the Barkeeper's Friend, okay? You're going to put it on here. Again, you're going to let the... The acetic acid, here we go. Gonna, see what I'm doing here? Now, what you're doing is you're going from side to side. And the reason is because we're brushing over the lines that were traditionally uh, filled with that India ink, okay? So we're not going up and down to try and get that India ink out of there. Uh, over here, flip it, do the same thing. I'm doing this in real time, as you can see, so you can get an idea how long this takes with this. Again, I made a thick slurry, so it's not so wet, so it's not really penetrating into the fibers. The ends here, you gotta really pay attention to, because there's a lot of wear in there. Uh, once you have it down to where you can see here where it's coming up, and again, the, the acid will lift up the dirt by itself, you know, and then once you finish over here, go back to the end, the brass part, because this will also clean up the brass. How nice is that? You get double acting here, right? Now, after this is done, you take a damp rag, one that's uh, been dampened, just a, I'm using paper towel, wipe it off, okay? Later on, look at that. Later on, what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll clean it. And again, to get this, to put the stop to here, we're gonna clean it with WD-40 and then put a, a wax. We're gonna uh, wax it. So what do you think so far? That's that's the key right there. Barkeeper's friend, that's the ticket. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what these rules look like before we started. I'm calling this project done. This one came out pretty nice, right? Again. This is a two Stanley number 62s. I looked them up. They're not crazy expensive. Uh, it's I think it's the 62 and a half that are really the collectible ones. So we dodged a board on that one. The patina board. The ruler guys can calm down. Uh, you see what we did here and how it looks. We got the finish up nice. The, the brass. The, 
The actual barkeeper's friend does a nice job on the brass. And you can see the inside here. Again, uh, after, now after you do the acylic acid or the uh, barkeeper's friend, which is that's what's, you know, its main ingredient. After you do that, you have to wipe it down with a damp cloth to make sure you get all that acid off of there. You don't want it to affect the wood. Then I put the WD-40 on it, wiped it all down with the WD-40, and then I gave it some uh, Johnson's Paste Wax, only because this is a soft wax, and I really worked it into the system. And uh, there we go. Looks nice, right? Uh, and same thing with this one. Now, this one was the one that had all the... The bad marks on the sides and, you know, with that, I don't know what it was, some kind of resin, but uh, the acetone was able to take that off. And you could see here we got that nice. So there we go. You all wanted to see the box rule is done because I'm sure maybe some of you have them. So if you're going to do it, I, my suggestion <laughs> is barkeeper's friend, a toothbrush, and uh, it makes quick work of this, you know. Uh, otherwise, if they're in good shape to begin with, if they look something like this, you just leave them the way they are, you know? But uh, there we go. What do you think? Okay, so that was a fun episode. A couple things to talk about real quick. Uh, I told you I was going to tell you this project, why I did that scraper and, you know, what we're going to be doing for that. Coming up very soon, a, uh, a good friend of mine and his wife, it was his wife's mother's, actually grandmother's sled. We're going to be tackling an old flexible flyer sled. It's going to probably be a week-long restoration, three episodes or whatever. It's a big job. So we're going to be doing that pretty soon. I'm pretty psyched for that. Some pretty challenges with that one. Anyway, lots of fun here. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. We will see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>